Hey, hello, 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 everybody. Another good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Again, wherever you are in the world. Happy to see you here on the next level the lecture on December 2nd, 2020. It takes about one minute and then we will start. First minute we talk about what we did last week and then we really go forward because it takes some people, takes some time for all the people together in our lecture of today. Great to see you here. The, the title of today will be You Won't Believe This. And I will I guarantee you, I will tell you things that you will say, Hans, now this is totally beyond any control. This is total nonsense what you say. Well, think twice. And uh, I, the things I would tell you, I, they, they have a, a profound background. So we start in about 30 seconds. Last week, we talked about the hero's journey. And we had great reactions from people almost from all over the world about the hero's journey. Well, you know, some people said, well, it resonates. I, I, I understand or I, I start to connect with it, what you say here. So let's start right now with the introduction. My name is Hans, the Storyteller Nordic. I'm from the Netherlands and it's December 2nd, 2020. I have three careers. The careers that I had before is I'm an come from the world of flying. I was an aircraft engineer with an aviation degree for many years. I had my own workshop for airplane maintenance and I was an airline pilot for about 30 years. And the second career is I'm a storyteller and I'm a worldwide theater maker, uh, entertainer. And why I tell you this because you deserve to know with whom you're talking here. And now I'm in my third career as a speaker coach, a brand creator and a brand uh, ambassador. We are going to start now. The title of today is You Won't Believe This. And um, now I traveled all around the world. I met a lot of people. I met a lot of stories. And I met a lot of cultures. And I talk from, talk from this aspect. And today the title is You Won't Believe This. Uh, we're going to start, bef not before I tell you the next things, for whom is this lecture? For whom? For people, and I will ask you to take the red pill or blue pill in a minute, for people who like to sort of reinvent their life or like to reinvent their habitat or like to redefine life. If you're happy with how you are today in your business or in your family or wherever you are and do your things, you say, I'm perfectly fine, everything is good, nothing wrong, then this is not a lecture for you. So this is all about redefining life in a way and also reinventing yourself. The word RE, re, it will come back during this lecture and also the next lectures because in my opinion, we need to reinvent, redo things, rediscover, re, uh, re, um, restyle things. And the, all the, I told it before, all the things I tell is not new. It's as old as mankind. And we forgot. We need to remember being a member again. So it's for people who like to redefine or reinvent life. What you will learn you will learn that what you see is not what it is in life. Our eyes and what we see is not what you what it is in life. And um, in a way, we look at life from one eye only. We are one eye closed. We look at life. You will learn that. And now, why do I do this? Number one, because I love to do that. If I wouldn't love to do that, I wouldn't do it. And that's also one of my my paradigms that you, if you do things in life you should connect with it from your heart and uh, also I think it's necessary because the things what I tell may seem fake or what does it have to do with my life and it takes a little while before and that's what I finally want before we can connect it with your practical issues in your life on a daily basis I am although I do entertainment shows for kids I don't like to give information that is just entertaining. Oh, interesting information. That's not for me. I like something to hear that I can digest, I can eat and digest, I can do something with it. Again, in my family life or in my life at the football club or in my business life. So that's why I do it because I think we need to redefine and relook at life again, given the crisis in the world. 
what are we uh, going to do? Um, yes, you know, uh, more than the fun of the head, I like the joy of the heart. And that is a little bit more profound than all the exciting. I like, again, things that has a meaning that you can use. I am working on a training program and that will be ready in some months. This one is free. Uh, there's no payment option, nothing. I will work hard on the training program and there will be a fee for the professional commercial training program will be ready in some months. So there's no catch today. There's nothing I am going to beg you to tell me or at the end you have to, to give me some money. Uh -uh, no, not at all. And what I tell essentially is easy to understand and it takes a lifetime to apply. And again, in my perception, we need to re-look at things that are easy to understand from past cultures, from past mythology, and reapply them in life. You are going to start. I see here nine points on my list. I hope it will take about, about uh, 30 minutes, this lecture. Number one, graffiti. We know what graffiti is. I have a pencil here. If I let it fall, it goes to the earth. And then we say, well, gravity is pulling on this pen and let it move towards the earth. Now, I'm going to tell you that this is nonsense. There is no such thing as gravity. There is no such thing as an un invisible rubber band that is pulling by the earth on this pencil. And you know... A detour what I tell here it will at the end of the lecture it will be able, you will be able to connect it with your life so gravity as we know today as we have told the school it this is not existent there is not there is no pulling forth from the earth why Hans I'm, I'm not sure I'm sure you say well now Hans this is nonsense well I give you an example if you see I did it yesterday also if you see on the interstate that two cars crash you see with your eyes. And let's assume in this car crash, everybody survived, nobody got hurt. You see these cars crashing towards each other. Damage. You see that, moving, they, move towards, they move towards each other. If I would tell you, well, that is because there was like a gravity. These cars were attracted by each other. That's why they moved to each other. That's why they crashed. There was like a gravity force. You would say, Hans, that's nonsense. Aha, okay, that's why. So seeing things moving towards each other doesn't mean there is an attractive force. Now keep that in mind. Now I'll take you to the next step of gravity. And that has to do with time. Time. And this is a hard one to chew what I'm going to tell you now. This has to do with time. And this was already told to us about 100 years ago by the people around Einstein. So what I tell is not, I didn't invent it, they told it already, and it's not in the school books. Why is it not in the school books? Anyway, it has to do with time. If you would have an object in the universe and there's nothing around it, then it would just float there. And it will make, and it is the hard one to chew, it makes its own time frame that will be stationary stationary time frame the next second it will be here the next minute it will be here the next year the next century that thing will still be here in the universe now if i take another subject another object in the universe like this that has its own time frame as well if they would live separate lives nothing will happen now what happens here Here's, this object has a time frame. If there comes another object, the time frame of that object influences the time frame of this object. It starts to bend it in order with the result, the consequence, that the natural future, let's say that the natural future of this object for the next second is bent by this object in such a way that they start to move towards each other. And now you say, Hans, well, you do that by force. Yes, I, I, I do that with my hands. I'm talking about virgin object in the universe that there is no force, left in freedom by themselves. Then the time frame is influenced in such a way 
that objects start to move to each other. And I know this is a hard one to chew because there are so many objects and molecules in the world. And this is the, the principle why objects move towards each other. And that you can still use formulas to, to, to reckon and to calculate uh, gravity. Yes, that's true. And essential principle is what I just stated here. It is the, it's the world of Heisenberger and of Einstein about 100 years ago. The next one, moonlight. We see, we think that the moon is a mirror. And if the sunlight goes to the moon, it reflects and goes to the earth. Nonsense. And now again, you say, Hans, this, you, now you tell her nonsense, Hans. The moon is a mirror and I see that the sun is coming onto the, onto the moon and it reflects the uh, light towards the earth. This has already been... Um, this has already been, uh, how you said in English, uh, there's another truth behind this. The, the real truth, the real thing what happened here, what happens here with the moonlight is not my, I didn't invent it. I read it and there are books about it. And again, it's not in the school books. What has happened is as follows that, and this is a scientifically proven thing even, because if you start to calculate the amount, the quantity of light that is coming on the earth from the moon as seeing the moon as a mirror we get so more far more quantity of light measured in a unit called lumen that it's impossible that the that only the sunlight can produce so much light in a in a bright evening so the moon cannot there's more light than the, the mirror could produce and now what's happening here that's a phenomenon that not many people know and it has a long history as for all this mankind is that the sun is radiating towards the moon and it is activating the moon the moon to give light by herself so in other words the moon is inspiring the, the sun is inspiring the moon to radiate to produce light aha okay of course, there is a little bit of a mirror effect. Yes, exactly. Um, this all comes from all, all uh, knowledge from the ancient cultures and that see the universe as a living, intelligent being instead of dead things. The moon, in their view, wasn't is not a dead thing. The sun isn't a dead thing. Um, I can relate to that a lot, and um, so. Moonlight is something produced by the moon herself. I say herself because the sun also in the old tradition and we're just scratching the surface what's going on here, you know. It, the, the sun is a masculine energy and the moon is a feminine energy. Masculine, feminine. We talked some weeks ago about the duality of life that we're in. That on the coin there are always two sides to a coin. There's always two sides, left, right, up, down. And our life is, is framed by being in a duality. And again, no, it's not, it's not difficult. But I, I don't want to make it difficult. It's easy to understand. I should be able to, uh, children will understand it. Should be able to understand it. So what is happening here, we come to that back in uh, 10 minutes, is that in our culture, we have uh, a feminine and a masculine energy. We know these principles. And the masculine energy is much higher than the feminine energy. And what you now see is redefining the feminine and the masculine energy. This is, this is the, the battle, in a way, that's going on in the world. Because they need to be rebalanced. They need to be rebalanced. The feminine energy has to grow more than the masculine energy. And if there are imbalance, the magical thing in the universe is that you will get harmony in your life. So, um, you cannot study philosophy. You cannot be a philosopher. No, study, a philosopher is not a profession. Now, saying this, I make a lot of enemies in the world. I know. And I tell you what, the, let's go back to the original meaning of a philosopher. What philosophy means. Philosophy is an old Greek word. Philosophia. Sophia is wisdom. Philo is I love. I, I, I connect philanthropic, philosophic. 
So everybody who loves to be connected with knowledge and wisdom is a philosopher. philosopher. And in the world of the ancients, all people are philosophers. We all should embrace knowledge and wisdom. And we talked about knowledge and wisdom last time that, you know, and this is, we are framed, we are designed by nature to do this. What is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Inform knowledge is information you digest as a human, for instance, I eat information. Then I go into my own internal alchemy. I do something with it and I get, it gets out of me by cr designing a car, making a beautiful sculpture, taking care of the children, be a good teacher, be a good father, whatever we do with our lives. Then we have internally um, transformed by internal alchemy the information we got and then we transform the world. And that is, excuse me, that is the essence of, of being alive. And then you are a philosopher when you do this, this phenomena in life. So we are all philosophers and it's part of us. We were given to us before we got born. So in this way, I dare to say, we don't have to study it. You can learn about it. You can, you can learn things about it. And is in essence, you are already a philosopher. We're all philosophers. Another one is uh, the, the next one. No, these are, I have another four or five to give to you. Is that the, the we are, uh, if you look at mankind as the elephant, then we are um, we are investigating ourselves. We are investigating our own elephant. And that's a funny thing in the universe. When there is this elephant, let's say it, mankind is the elephant, and we are investigating what is happening with the elephant. And yesterday I said, this is stupid, useless, and a waste of time. And essentially, this is what we did. This is what we do. And... Um, I told that some weeks ago that about about between 1000 and 2000 years ago things happened in our history that we 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 took the wrong exit in a way and we started to be disconnected from our essence from our nature and then we start to see well what the heck is this so what we do now in in with as, as a mankind in in studying uh, medicine studying the universe and in the eyes of the old uh, ancient cultures it, this is hilarious what we do because they would say it's already there you don't have to study yourself it's already there there's there are other things you can study and you don't have to, to investigate who you are because you, the universe knows already that you are here because you're part of the universe and what you learn what you give what you make a universe is given to the universe and the universe will say oh, okay thank you i knew that already so that is why you say, if I just study my own elephant, uh, then it's, it's a waste of time, it's useless, and uh, it's a little bit stupid. You know, we talked about feminine and masculine energy, and yes, it has to, it has to do with our status of today. It has to do with your life, it has to do with the, with the life in, on the whole world, it has to do with your family life and with your business life. We look at life like six cyclops with one eye closed. And then, again, this is old ancient knowledge that I'm reviving. And if you look at life with one eye closed, that is what in general the people now in the world, we all do this. You see a lot of things and you don't see any perspective. And the other eye opener, eye opener, opening the other eye will give us far more better perspective on, uh, on our life. So we are all cyclops and we need to somehow redefine life and open that other eye metaphorically speaking of course you know the about rules knowing the rules does not make you a better player knowing all the rules slows you down there is a delicate balance between how much you have to know in order to have a harmonious life and how much you should not know. It's not the intention that you should know everything. I give you an example. And this is a delicate balance of how much we should know and we should not know that we lost in time. And I'll give you an example. We had in Holland or all over the world, we had a great soccer player, 
a soccer player. We still have famous soccer player. One famous one died some days ago, a week ago. A famous soccer player. If you would tell this famous soccer player before he goes into the game, the soccer game, you would give him all the theoretical knowledge, how grass grows, how the rain is developed, how the grass where he's going to play was made, what is the molecular uh, structure of the grass, how the ball was made, what type of rudder it comes from, where the ball he's going to play with was made. All, if you give him all this information, it will be, he will be ahead like this. It's so much. And he cannot play guy right. Take it away. Don't, don't, don't tell him those things. Tell him exactly what he needs to be. And then he will be a better player. So. Life is not meant to know everything. Life is, is meant to know enough. For what you have to do. And. If you know too much. You will be a bad player. If you don't know enough. It will, you will be a bad player as well. So And also this balance. Where what wow. It's, we lost that. We lost that. And we also re need to refine that. My, my message is positive. I, I, I have, I, I'm, I'm very positive about the future of all of us. Because we should and we can be. So it has to do with the next thing I want to tell you. Now if you have too much knowledge, it's like ballast on your head, you get too heavy. So you don't need, need, to, know all, don't need to know all these things. Let's talk on the line. Let me see. I have two more subjects I want to talk about. Uh, one is anarchy. If I say anarchy, anarchist, then you have you in you you see already what's happening in you because we've got a lot of documentaries about anarchistic groups and we see a lot of chaos and people fighting and problems. That is that is the paradigm we get when I say anarchy. Okay, well, let's talk about it a little bit further. What does the word mean? I told you before, if you go back to the original meaning of words, you start to understand things from a pure standpoint far more. Anarchy, it's an old Greek word. It means no ruler, there is no rule. And then you would say, if there is no rule, it will be total chaos. Well, I can open your eyes because the universe is all about shifting from one to up and down between chaos and order. We have chaos in order to make order. The world is in a chaotic state. There will be order. I guarantee that because we are all part of the big universe and that's always or chaos, order, chaos, order, chaos, order, always like that. No ruler. Why do I like to, the word anarchy? I like now what I said before, if you know too much, it's not, an, it's not good if you don't know enough, it's not good. You need to know optimal things for life. If you have no ruler, and then it's meant no ruler outside you. If there is no ruler outside you, there's no government, there's no king, there's no queen, there's no police, there's no uh, uh, pastor in the church, there's nobody telling you the rules outside you. Then what happens then? Then you have to be your own ruler. You have to be your own king. And that's damn difficult to live without rules and make your own rule. Being disciplined for yourself and having your own rules and being order for yourself and uh, take, make your own rules and, and, and get this discipline inside you without anybody telling you what to do and what you're not allowed to do. So it gives you a, the, the exact responsibility of life. So that's why I love Anarchy. I like to be an anarchist. I cannot do that yet. If you're an anarchist, it's it's not easy because you have a big responsibility for your own life. A lot, a lot, a lot. So think about it. You know what? What I love. If we're all anarchist, we're all our own king. We talked about it some weeks ago. That the the the, the, the hero's journey is how to become from a prince into a king. And uh, anarchy can help you. I tell you one more thing. And then uh, I'll let you go to your daily things you have to do. This is part of the Western, of the, of the science that was designed by the Western world, Western world. And in the Western world, science, it could be science for nature, it could be biology, medical, all, all these aspects of science, 
they they say the principle of being a scientific man or woman is that I can have an objective view on life. So that's the essence of modern science, that we can have an objective view of life. This is total nonsense. There is no such thing as an objective view on life or anything outside you. This has already been proven scientifically by other people, Heisenberger, Einstein, about 100 years ago. And knowing that you are not, you can never be an objective observer of life has a big impact on your life. Think about it the next days. We are all subjective observers. Has already been proven by a lot of uh, chemical and um, scientific experiments that, and I, I'll shorten the story, and I told it yesterday, let's take the soccer game again. If you are on the, in the big, um, if you're watching a soccer game with thousands of people, and I know this is going to sound weird, at the moment you watch the soccer game, you are part of that game. You start to influence even the end result of it. You could say, oh yeah, by just shouting yes or good or bad, it's more than that. If you, and this has already been proven in big laboratories, if you're watching a chemical reaction and between the chemical reaction and you there's like 10 inches of glass, that seems like I'm totally disconnected from it, it has been proven many, many times over and over time, over and over again, if you watch that chemical reaction behind 10 inches, that's 25 centimeters of glass between that and you, you influence the result of that chemical reaction. This is a hard one to chew. And it's true. Uh, I can tell you the next time more details about it. Why I tell you this? Because what uh, um, connecting with life, with the intention, the thinking that I can be an objective observer or I am a subjective observer, I will be part of everything that's happening, that has a big influence on your life on the life of your family, on the life of your village, the life of your country, on your culture, on your thinking about the universe, and on what we're going to do with our lives, and what type of culture we create. So, we come to the conclusion of this lecture. Thank you for being here. I have one more thing to tell you. We talked about one eye closed. We look at one eye closed. And um, for me, the new world that we are having, that we we can make, and it's in our hands. It's in our hands. We can say yes or no. And the new world we can make, and it may sound may sound fake. And yes, we just starting to scratch the surface. Is opening up the other part of life, opening up the other eye that gives another view on life. And the other part, the other eye that will open metaphorically, is the eye that tells you all about femininity, about moon energy, about magic, about fun, about excitement, about there is no need to understand everything. There is no need to have joy. There is a need to have there is no need to have fun. There is a need to have joy. And the left and the right brainers, the left brainer is all about logic, the right brain is more about intuitive part. We need to rebalance that. I did it for 30 years in my life to find the new alchemy, internal chemistry. What is the rebalancing of the left and the right brain in between the logical and the intuitive part? And that's why I tell you these things, because we need to do that together. I do it in my way, you do it in that way. I love to have a future where the feminine, the female energy is rising again and where we will have feminine leaders, world leaders, that start from their own power. We men, I'm a man, I like force. Women like power. And you know the word power means? Power means the potential to give, the potential to act. It's not the act of acting. Power means the potential too. It's the it's the internal force you see in a in a in a in a bear or a lion, and without acting, we men we love to act and make make force. So the power the the feminine power is 
the potential to act without having to act. I love to see that far more in balance and I love to see far more women in the leadership position in the world based upon their purity. And don't don't copy me, I don't copy a man because then we have the next world war coming up. We need real real we need the essence of the woman to rebalance the force of the man. Your takeaway for today is let it sink in. I said tell I say it for the fourth time. What I tell should be easy to understand. If it's difficult, I should do it better. And let it sink in. And your takeaway is, is that for now, enjoy your life. If you have time, take a red wine or a white wine and let it sink in. Like the wine sinks in, you feel somehow the energy of the wine coming up. Let my words sink in and then things will happen by magic. Thank you for watching. I'll be back. Hans is storyteller Nordseek.